so this is my uh, JMP that I've had since about uh, 2012. Uh, again, it's been modified by Dan Gower, so watch the video on this 800 first to learn more about his mods and stuff and him. Um, yeah, it's I think a 1977 model, and I picked it up really cheap. I think in total with buying the amp and the mods, it must have been eight hundred pounds, which is sort of standard price for buying an amp. And this is completely custom, like completely re rebuilt for me. And there's um, loads of cool hidden features. So on the front. I always like uh, the front panels to look completely stock, so when you turn up to a venue and someone sees you lugging that in, they're going to be like, well that's not going to sound very good, and then, uh, no it wouldn't sound good, but not right for the sort of music we play, because um, these amps are, to really get any volume out of them unmodded, you have to crank them way up, and this was the most deafening amp ever, and it was just super clean. Um, and you need like a, a t attenuator or a hot plate to really get some distortion out of it. So anyway, it's completely been gutted. I it's cool. I liked the idea of just not telling anyone that it was modded and stuff and keeping it secret. But I figured I'd just do a video and show everyone. So on the front, everything looks mostly the same. Here, where it's normally volume one and volume two, you've had these different inputs. Um, I've had the other, like you blocked off the other three, so I've just got the one input. And this volume two is now a gain control, or gain two. And um, you'll see where the other ones are in a minute. And this now volume one is now the master gain. Um, and it is really hard to get this up for a bedroom volume because it's a super loud head. Um, so that's that's different. The EQ is a bit more responsive than normal. And here on the bass control, um, we have push pull which is a mid boost and uh, I don't know why it's on the bass control but I'm sure it makes sense on the inside um, obviously you've got a limited amount of room to work with uh, on some of these older heads and yeah so that's the front we'll check out the back now so on the back here we've got um, some extra hidden controls like I said I like to make the amps look stock on the front and hide all the other stuff on the back. I like the way it looks and I liked people not realising that it was modded but I've given that away by doing this video. So um, at the left here we've got a effects loop. Um, these added on, which this amp didn't have an effects loop before. In the loop I normally have a delay, a boss delay, DD6 or DD7, can't remember, and an RV5 reverb. And over here we've got gain 1 I don't know why game one's here, but again, I'm sure it makes sense to Dan, who modded it. That's also got a, a, a pull edge control, which gives gives the tone a bit more edge. I asked him for this head to make it really full sounding and a bit more stonery and fat and thick. Um, and it this sort of is a knob that I can change depending on what guitar I'm using. So if I'm using an SG, I leave it in, and that's like a because the SG is quite a thin, brittle sounding guitar, I leave put that in, and with this really full sounding head, it's really full, but still get the attack and stuff. If I'm using my Les Paul, which is thick, thicker, and it's chambered and weight relieved, so naturally it's a bit more woolly and fat sounding. You pull this out, and it instantly tightens up the tone. Um, it's not quite the same as using a, a tube screen or something to tighten it up. Um, I can tell you exactly what it does circuit wise but um, it just ties up so yeah like normally if I've got an SG on my Firebird or something I'll leave it in if I'm playing my Les Paul bring it out um, over here this one's called Violence it's got a little skull and crossbones on it I didn't specifically ask for it to be called that but um, that's fine I, I think that's another gain stage slightly different type of gain I always leave all of them around the uh, that position, just between five and six, or around six. Not six o'clock, the number, if you was. Then this is one of the main things that I'd ask for when getting that modded. Um, it's essentially a resonance control. So um, 
it's it just add, gives it that super low end grounded to the floor chunk um, that you don't really get from the bass control so that's that's a resonance that's called depth and then pull the thump pull out and it shifts where where it's boosting the lows or the resonance so if you've got like a uh, you know a graphic equalizer or a, a graph of where the frequencies are that will shift where the low end is uh, I think by pulling it out I can tell you the exact hertz or frequency that it it's uh, has a hump at but it's pretty cool again like I sometimes go a bit overboard he added more than enough on here so I keep it again around the angle and that's it right so I'm gonna play some riffs and random chugging and stuff and uh, I'm using my SG which has a EMG 85 in the bridge and because I'm using this guitar which is a little bit thinner I've got the gain pot in the back pushed inwards so it's the more uh, fat sounding tone but because it's with an SG it kind of evens out a bit with the uh, the pull boost out for like more mids So I've switched to my Les Paul now, which is a thicker guitar, which is kind of uh, a bit chambered and weight relieved, and it's got a passive pickup in it, and this is with the, the game pot on the back pushed inwards, so it's the thicker sound. And then when I pull the switch out, coil tap
Uh, again, this is with just one cable going straight into the guitar. No, no pedals of any kind, not even a noise suppressor at the moment. So this is just everything you're hearing is directly from the head, and it's going into this orange cab, and uh, just one SM57 on the cab. Right, so this is the back of the head, obviously. Uh, everything around the front is kind of set almost to 12 o'clock with a little bit less mids, a uh, tiny bit more presence and a bit more bass. And the gain's at uh, 12 o'clock, pointing straight upwards. And this is with the pull edge pot in the out position to make it a bit tighter. series effects loop it's a tube buffered effects loop so um you could kind of run any length of cable and you won't really lose signal which is great for me being right at the front of the stage um i busted one of these off on tour so v-man replace that for me on uh on this with just something he found on one of his old pedals i think and yeah it's it's basically the head was a complete rebuild like uh, the pots, jacks, components, um, it's got a custom grounding and DC heaters in it uh, which help keep the noise floor lower and get rid of any hum in the signal which is obviously great to have a not so loud head or noisy. Yeah so basically the glass control as you heard there it kind of um, revoices the power section uh, it's taken it from like a really dark and smooth kind of sound to a more uh, like up front and biting and a like aggressive sound. Uh, again, I kind of like to leave it halfway. Being in standard tuning, I don't want to get too kind of scrapey and scratchy and stuff. And obviously depth, you can kind of hear what that does, it's like a resonance. So uh, the mod has got like a four gain stage with um, an extra preamp tube in it and uh, they're kind of dual gain controls. You've got one and then number two is on the back and they're kind of running at all times but at different points um, in the circuit and uh, this one's got obviously the the high pass filter that tightens up the lows and makes it a bit more uh, a bit more gainier and kind of tighter sounding for the modern stuff or well, basically when I'm using my Les Paul which is quite a thick um, sounding guitar and if I'm using my SG which is like I say thinner pop it back in uh, yeah so that's pretty much it check out Dan Gao's stuff um, you know, and like and subscribe to the channel and everything. Cool.